Hi, class. Okay, now that we've laid out a lot of the uh, foundational terms, especially with the nephron and the afferent and efferent arterioles and the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule and proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, uh, collecting ducts. Now that you have some of those the foundational terms and you've heard it a few times, the nephrons are important and you've heard of me talk about the cortex, right? The cortical region and the medulla of the pyramid, right? There was the uh, renal cortex and the renal medulla. So the nephrons exist in both. The nephrons exist in the cortex and in the medulla, but the cortical nephrons represent 80 to 85 percent are primarily found and located in the cortex right so you got the renal corpuscle in the outer portion of the cortex and the only thing that extends into medulla are these short loops of henley that extend only into the outer region of the medulla and it creates urine with osmolarity similar to blood so we have this so if you look on the left hand side we can refresh our memory as to where the cortex is and where the renal medulla is so when we look up here at the top and we're looking at the cortical nephron we could see the renal capsule the outside of the a kidney not the same thing as the renal corpuscle right the renal corpuscle we're thinking like bowman's capsule which houses the glomerulus here is the arcuate artery off the arcuate artery is the cortical radiate vein off the cortical radiate i'm sorry not the vein the cortical radiate artery comes off the arcuate artery again arcuate artery cortical radiate artery and off of that is that afferent arterial afferent arterial leading into the glomerulus and now you're going to have an efferent arterial really nice you can see in this picture the efferent is a lot thinner and smaller than the afferent so blood comes in at a faster rate than it can exit allowing for filtration rate to take place so you got these impurities being pulled out this filtrate being created pulling it into the very very first part called the proximal convoluted tubule so here's the proximal convoluted tubule and now we have this coming down this descending limb of the loop of Henley right here's the actual loop and then it comes up to the ascending limb of the loop of Henley then you've got that distal convoluted tubule here and that distal convoluted tubule here's the portion of it right here where if we cut that distal convoluted tube you're going to see the macula densa cells between the afferent and efferent that's making up the juxtaglomerular complex uh, that's got the macula densa cells and the juxtaglomerular cells that are involved in releasing erythropoietin and renin. Okay, and then after the distal convoluted tubule coming out this way, we're going to have the filtrate coming out. These are all connecting ducts which lead into the collecting duct. These small ones are connecting. Here's a connecting, here's a connecting, here's a connecting duct from other nephrons that eventually lead into, the, lead into the collecting duct. Here's the papillary duct. Here's the renal papilla. There's the minor calyx. Okay. Most of this nephron, the key here is that most of this nephron is in the cortex, right? Right here, everything in this region from here to here and from here to here this is the cortex the renal medulla is below so you're getting a little bit of that loop in the medulla 
but the medullary, the juxtamedullary nephrons, the renal corpuscles are deep in the cortex. They receive blood from the peritubular capillaries and the vasa recta. The ascending limb has thick and thin regions and enables the kidney to secrete very, very concentrated urine. This one you see is a little bit deeper in. This is the juxtamedullary nephron where you can see that much more of that loop of Henle lies within the medullary region. This is the very salty region right here. Lots of salt and water are pulled out. Okay, so if we look back here, this one just has a little bit of the loop down at the bottom. Most of the nephrons in the cortex, that's a cortical nephron, and these are medullary nephrons. Big difference in appearance. Now, in terms of the glomerular filtration rate, that's the amount of filtrate that's formed by both kidneys each minute. And the homeostasis requires the kidneys to maintain a relatively constant glomerular filtration rate, or GFR. If it's too high, the substances pass too quickly, and they're not reabsorbed. And if the glomerular filtration is too low, nearly all is reabsorbed, and some waste products are not adequately excreted. So glomerular and constant GFR is pretty important. So here is that filtration membrane. Remember we showed you in the glomerulus, you've got the podocytes, you've got different layers of different size pores and holes and slits where that first layer is gonna stop all the cells plus the platelets. And then the second layer is gonna stop the large plasma proteins. And then that third layer is gonna stop the medium sized proteins, but not the small ones, okay? And that's what's going to allow filtrate to come through. Again, you could see the podocytes creating these filtration slits. You can see the afferent arterial on the bottom, efferent arterial on the top. Here's that glomerulus inside. Here's proximal convoluted tubule on the right. And on the left-hand side is the distal convoluted tubule. That's where we've got the macula densa cells and the JG cells all through here. And glomerular filtration is taking place all throughout the capsular space throughout here. And again, blood coming in to the kidney, right from the aorta, you're gonna have the renal artery coming in. The renal artery leads into a segmental, which leads into the interlobar, which leads into an arcuate. And then after the arcuate, you got those cortical radiates that come off into the cortex. And then from the cortical radiates, that's going to be the afferent. And the afferent is going to lead into the glomerulus. One's an afferent, one's an efferent. And then glomerular filtration is going to take place right in this space. You don't want it too slow. You don't want it too fast. Just perfect. It's going to allow, at the right rate, it's going to allow what's necessary to be reabsorbed, right? It'll allow what's necessary to be reabsorbed so that only the toxins and uh, impurities are pulled out to eventually lead into urine. In terms of neural regulation, we said that it's supplied by the sympathetics. So in case of a strong sympathetic stimulation, like with exercise, or if someone shot or stabbed and they're bleeding, the afferent arterioles get constricted. So when it gets constricted, urinary output is reduced, meaning that there's more blood that's available for other organs for survival. And fluid intake is highly uh, variable. Homeostasis requires the maintenance of fluid volumes within specific limits, and also urine concentration varies with anti-diuretic hormone, right? 
High intake of fluid results in dilated urine of high volume, and low intake of fluid results in a very concentrated urine of low volume. 